Hello, I'm Graham and I hope everyone's having a great day and welcome to the third part in this video tutorial series for new users to the Canon EOS M50 camera. Incidentally, this is a camera that I'm using to record this video clip at the moment. Now I've got the 18 to 150 lens on at the moment and it's set to 100 millimeters. I'm about 15 feet away from the camera and the aperture is f6.3. You can see the amount of depth of field between me and the moors behind me, which are about two miles away. So the moors are nicely out of focus and it's given me a good isolation between here and the background. Now today's video is all around shooting in aperture priority and shutter priority modes, or the AV and TV mode as they're known on Canon cameras. Now, the reason you shoot in the AV mode, or aperture priority mode, is when you want to set an aperture to give them the amount of depth of field that you create in your image. Now, you might want a very narrow depth of field if you're shooting something like a portrait, or you might want a very deep depth of field if you're going to shoot a landscape, so you need to use a small aperture. Now, there are three things which actually govern the amount of depth of field in an image. The first one is obviously the aperture, the second one is the focal length of the lens and the third one is the distance of the camera to your subject and I'm going to demonstrate all three of those in this video to give you an idea of the amount of depth of field you can create at various apertures, various focal lengths and various subjects to camera distance. Now I've changed the lens focal length to 150mm, I've kept the aperture the same at f6.3 and the camera distance to subject is the same, so the only thing that's changed is the focal length and you can see behind me that the blur has increased, so we're using a longer focal length to make the subject even more isolated against the background. So that's one of the tricks you can use if you want to shoot portraits outside and you want to get a nice sharp uh, subject against a blurred background, use a longer focal length and try and get the camera as close to the subject as you can and then keep the subject as far away from the background as you can. Now for the next test I'm going to move the camera closer. I'm going to keep the same aperture and the same focal length but we're going to move the camera closer so you get a bigger image but the background will go more out of focus. So I'll bring the camera forward to about half this distance which will be about seven and a half feet. So here's a shot now with the camera set to the same aperture f6.3, the same focal length 150 millimeters but I've moved the camera closer so we should be able to get a nice sharp subject against a very blurred isolating background. Now the next shot I'm going to be using a 75 to 300 EOS EF lens. So I'm going to use the EF to EOS M adapter on the camera. Should be able to set that focal length to 300 from the same distance. We should have about the same head and shoulder shot, but we should have a much uh, blurrier background because of the change in focal length. So let me set that up and see what that looks like. Well, in this shot, I have set up that EF 70 to 300 millimeter lens using the Viltrox EF M2 adapter, which converts the EF lens to an EOS M mount and gives me the same focal length of the main lens. So, even though we use an APS-C sensor, which has a normal 1.6 times crop, we are using the uh, optics in this adapter to give us the same. EF equivalence of 300 millimeters, so we haven't changed the, the focal length by using that crop factor. So you can see the same distance of 15 feet, I've got the same aperture of f6.3, the amount of blur behind me is far more than it was with the 150 millimeter setting with the same subject distance and with the same aperture. So that just goes to show you can use focal length to govern the amount of depth of field as well as you can use aperture and the distance. So I'm now going to change the aperture from f6.3 to f16. I'll probably have to move up my ISO to do that so we might get a little bit of noise in the image but it's going to prove that by changing the aperture you'll also change the amount of blur behind your subject. Well I've now changed the aperture to f16 and as I thought I've had to change my uh, ISO to 800 to give me the same exposure. So you can see the amount of blur behind me has decreased as we've stopped down to f16. So it's shown you by decreasing your aperture, making a small aperture, you increase the amount of depth of field. It means that blur behind you becomes less. 
Now for this particular shot I've set the lens to 24mm and because setting the lens to 24mm the aperture goes up to f5.6 I've stopped it back down to 6.3 to maintain the same aperture for all these tests. The camera distance is the same, 7.5 feet, but what you're seeing now is myself and the background are almost equally sharp. So by using a wider angle you can get more depth of field in your shot. So this might be something you want if you're on holiday and you want to include a portrait against the uh, ambience of the uh, place you're in. So you use a wide angle setting or a smaller aperture to create more depth of field. But if you're doing an interview outside it's better to use that longer focal length and a wide aperture to enable you to isolate your subjects away from your background. Well in this section we're going to be looking at shooting in the shutter priority mode or the TV mode as it is known on the Canon cameras and that's enabled by turning the top mode dial until the TV aligns with the white index mark on the top of the camera. Now you use shutter priority mode if you want to take control of how the camera records subject motion blur. So if you're shooting sports you want to be selecting a very fast shutter speed so that stops any of the subject motion. But here in this section of the video I want to capture a waterfall so I want to create a long shutter speed to enable us to get that silky smooth water. Now I've come to a waterfall here in the Rivington Glen but unfortunately there hasn't been much rain for the last couple of days so the water flow is very minimal so I'm only going to be able to capture a small portion of the water coming over some rocks rather than the full waterfall there's just not enough water but it will still demonstrate the same effects of using a slow shutter speed to enable us to get this silky smooth operation. Under normal situations you want to be using something like a half a second or a one second exposure and in order to capture this silky smooth operation. Now in daylight you're probably having to use a variable ND filter to allow you to get to those long exposure times. But here I'm shooting in the uh, canopy of the forest and it's almost going dust so I'm easily going to achieve a one second exposure at something like f16 to enable me to get this uh, depth of field and the amount of subject motion and blur that I want in this particular shot. So what I'm going to do is set the camera up by the water, uh, set up camera so I can film the back of it and show you how to enable this long exposure and how you can capture these sort of shots in your video or stills photography. So let me set the camera up and I'll resume in a moment. So I've now set up the camera for you so you can actually see what I'm doing on the back of the screen. Currently we're shooting in the program auto mode, you can see that by the fact we've got the letter P on the back of the LCD screen. So we're going to go into the shutter priority mode, that means turning the top mode dial until TV aligns with the white index mark and that's confirmed by the TV appearing on your screen. Now I've had to use ISO 800 with the shutter speed set to a quarter. Quarter is probably a good speed for recording silky smooth water, anywhere between sort of quarter, half or one second is ideal for this sort of photography. So by using a quarter of a second, if I half depress the shutter button, you can see that I've got an aperture of f10. So that's with ISO 800. There's probably enough depth of field using this lens and it's currently set to a focal length of about 18 millimeters. So this is the 18 to 55 millimeter lens. If I wanted to come down to f8, then I could afford to drop my ISO. So let's go down to f8. So to do that I'll just need to drop my ISO, so I need to go one stop, so I'm going to drop the ISO from 800 down to 400. So now we've got a quarter of a second at f7.1 which is near enough the f8 that I want. So let's just take that shot, again I'm going to use that two second timer to record the uh, image. And I'm going to focus here on the water which is where I want most of my action to be. So there we captured the first image and you can see the effect of the water on the screen here and on your uh, TV screen now, the effect of that quarter second exposure. If I wanted to make this exposure longer, say I wanted to make this a half a second, so while I'm controlling the shutter that's indicated by the brown icon on the shutter wheel, so I'm using the front control dial to change the shutter speed, and let's make that half a second. If you look at that now, the aperture has gone to f11. So if I wanted to make this still f8, then I can drop my ISO again. So I'm going to drop my ISO to 200, that one stop, press set, and then we've got my f8 or f7.1 with a half a second exposure. So let's take that shot, 
you see there's a lot more blur in the water on this particular shot. So it depends on just how much subject motion blur you want to apply to your picture. If you wanted to make this much longer, let's go for a one second exposure. So again, using that front control dial to change the shutter speed. Go the right way. So there's a one second exposure. If you look at the aperture at the gain, it's f11. I wanted that to be f8. Then again, drop my ISO, and I can just achieve this by going down to ISO 100. So we should have the f7.1, f8 with our one second exposure. Let's take a shot again. And then we can see we've got much more blur in the subject. To give you an idea of what the real look of this water is, so I set my shutter speed um, to something like a 50th of a second which would be how our eyes normally see this so if I change this to about a 50th of a second look at the aperture it's f3.5 so it can't drive the lens any wider so I'm going to have to change my ISO to get the normal exposure so we'll probably need to be in the region of ISO 400 we're still not in control a little bit more ISO 1600 and it's you know, just come in control, so it's changed the aperture to f4. If I wanted to go back to f8, then obviously I'm going to have to change my ISO again. So we'll go to at 3200, and there's 5.6. I wouldn't like to go above ISO 3200 because of noise issues with the image. So we'll take the shot at f5.6 with ISO 3200 with our one fiftieth of a second exposure. And that's how the water normally looks to your eye, um, just that little bit of motion blur in it. If you wanted to completely stop the motion then you'd have to use a much faster shutter speed and to achieve that I'd have to use a much higher ISO. So just for the heck of it we'll go to ISO 12800. The aperture is f11 so it means I can change my shutter speed. And we'll go to a 250th and that's maintaining aperture control of f5. So let's take that 250th f5 ISO 12800. So you can see there's a lot more arresting of the water as it's running down. But obviously we've incurred the penalty of a lot more noise in the image because we're using a much higher ISO. Now we're shooting in the shutter priority mode but for something like this I would normally prefer to shoot in the manual mode so I can actually set my ISO down to 100. I can set my aperture to what I want so let's set this to f11. So I've set the aperture to f11 and now I can control my shutter speed to give me the right exposure. See we're underexposed by about one and a half stops so I can change my shutter speed make it longer to imp increase the exposure. You can see the exposure meter is moving back towards the centre point. So that's giving me a two second exposure with ISO 100 and F11. So we'll take that shot and you can compare it to the original TV mode. Well, that's it for part three of this video tutorial series and I hope you're finding it useful. Of course, if you're a new viewer and haven't subscribed already to the channel, please do click the subscription uh, button and the bell notification icon and then you'll be notified when I upload the next video in this series. Now, in part four, we're going to be looking at two other elements which can affect your image quality. The first one is white balance. Now normally we use automatic white balance and in most cases that gives you a good colour rendition. But there are some circumstances where you might want to get more colour accurate results and that's when we would use a manual white balance. And I'll be showing you how to do a manual white balance procedure with this particular camera. And the other one is the picture styles. Now the picture styles can allow you to change the parameters that the JPEG process image is derived from. So we'll be looking at the various photo styles and how you can fine tune them to any particular style of photography that you might be using. So that will be in part four and that will be coming up very shortly. So until then, thanks again for watching. Please do take care and I hope to see you all in the next one. Goodbye for now.